everyone, and welcome back for another episode of Siri Sims. We're back in the science community of Ladesia, and there's been quite a bit of growth. Oh, and there we go. There's some aliens checking out the town, too. I guess they're checking in on the progress as well. Ladesia is the science community tucked up in the northern mountains of my sim world. It's run and owned by the Eureka Foundation and Corporation. The Eureka Corporation is led by Erica Eureka, the matriarch of my eldest legacy, going on five years now. For those of you who have been watching the show, some of this information might be familiar to you. For those of you who are brand new, this is a perfect time to jump in and check up on the growth of the city, while also having me explain some of the ways that this Let's Play works and that I run the city of Ladesia. First off, let's go to the top of the hill. As you can tell, there are not many houses here yet, and there's also not many community lots or occupied housing. I like to grow my cities organically. It makes it a lot harder for me not to have everything set up already, but I always come up with really surprising and creative ideas by following the needs and wants of my sims rather than planning everything out beforehand. It's definitely a very different and demanding style of gameplay, if I hadn't been in love with Ladesia for years and wanted to share it with the community that for that long, I probably wouldn't be doing it like this. But I hope that we can all enjoy just seeing the city grow as the residents naturally need things and as we have new brainy types moving into Ladesia, wanting to share their life experience and their ideas with everyone. On the very top of the hill, we have these two occupied houses. They weren't there before, but thankfully I've managed to get them thrown up. This is the Eureka Estates, where Eris, Erica Eureka, the white, well-read white hair, according to this, lives with her husband, Evander, and her eldest daughter, Rosalind, her daughter's husband, Bredith, and their three children. We will be going through and doing interviews with the Eurekas to become more familiar with all of them in another episode. One of Rosalind's siblings, one of, one of the three triplets that Erica gave birth to many years ago is Newton Eureka. Newton is here with his wife, Valerie, and their three sons. The third triplet, Evelyn, lives in what passes for Japan in my game, and I am thinking I will bring her over because we have this empty lot right here. And when you've got a set of triplets and it goes one, two, three, well, you start missing that third triplet pretty soon. The only other occupied lot we currently have in Ladesia belongs to Natalie Greenheart, who has been able to star in a couple very special Let's Play episodes of her own. We have watched as she has built up from literally nothing, adding to her land until she has been able to put in a proper garden, and last time we checked on her, she had just gotten a, gar a golden gardening badge. As soon as she is able to serve Erica Eureka a mouth-watering meal made with vegetables from her own garden, then she'll be getting a $10,000 grant and opening up an adorable little health food store right here. She'll be preparing fresh organic meals, vegetables, uh, and fruit for people to come and buy here from the little sprouted food store. It should be a lot of fun. Now you may be wondering, why would I make her have to wait and put extra challenges before poor Natalie is able to open her dream shop? Well, in this Let's Play, Siri Sims, you're going to find that I add a lot of those extra challenges just to make the game more entertaining for myself. Often they're made up just on a whim. I'll be playing a sim and think, oh, this would be really fun, but that sounds just too easy. So I'll make a sim have to do extra work in order to achieve their next goal or their next phase in life. For Natalie, that's getting a gold gardening badge so she can have mouth-watering tomatoes grown chopped up and delivered into a delicious salad that's going to have the sparkling food effect that came in Sims 2 Seasons along with the ability to grow your own fruit smudgies. And then when she serves it to, Nat to Erica Eureka and a nice little dinner, then Erica will be impressed enough to go, you can stay and you can open up your shop. This town is unlike many others because Erica does have control over who is able to come into the community. Now, the Eureka Corporation owns all this land, and they're going to establish the laws and several of the 
just quirky little city things that go on here. And I am going to have many more geniuses, geniuses of all type. We're not just talking about the brainy ones, we're talking about geniuses in art, geniuses in music, geniuses in obscure random facts about different varieties of cat that have been bred in Europe. You never know what meeting of two coincidental ideas is going to produce some of the most interesting inventions that have ever been created. And Erica knows this, so she's going to have lots of people move in. People who you might not think would normally be considered a genius, but when you put them in a town like this and you give them all the resources they need to pursue their interests, amazing things happen. Oh, look at the birds. I just love watching the birds like fly over the the land. They're just so pretty. This is the little dock, and down here is the Open Oceans Research Center. In just a minute we'll be going in there to check in on how the Open Oceans Research Center is coming along. I've been working on it for a couple weeks now. It's really been <laughs> one of my pet projects. It's taken me a while. Another thing that's going, that's developing down here, you can see where some of the apartments, the beachfront apartments, are being created. There's going to be a little line of them on the street right here. Uh, I don't think I'm going to run them like actual apartments. I'm still debating about that. I find that playing one sim all by themselves can sometimes be boring. So this might be shared housing where everyone just gets their own bank account to keep track of their personal funds. There's going to be matching housing built up to the left. And then there's also some fun housing over here. Sorry, the camera's moving kind of fast. There we go. Right here, and this is where the tree houses are. There's going to be a whole little collection of tree houses right here on tiny lots that Sims can move into and just in enjoy <laughs> the real kind of living that is available here in Ladesia, which is extremely unique. Um, <laughs> very based around science and the environment, since Erica herself is indeed a plant sim. You can see all of the roofs are flat and surrounded by hedges, and that's because Ladesia has the Green Roof Initiative, which means that all of the roofing, including for the buildings we have over to the side here, uh, is if green roofing instead. Not all of the houses have plants on them just yet, but they're going to end up like the ocean, the oceanography center right here, where there's plants all on the top and there's some energy savers, and that's how the housing uh, manages to cut down on its energy uses. The only exception is going to be the tree houses, because, well, they're already in a tree. <laughs> so they're going to have peaked roofs to help channel the rainwater. Ah, yes. And then this is also a new creation. This is actually a residential lot. Uh, that I made by accident. It's going to be turned into a community lot, but it's just got three little islands off the coast here where sims can come over and they can eat the fruit. There's different fruit trees on these islands and they can come and swim or relax in the hammock. There's been a bit more development over here. We don't have the archaeology dig site set in yet, but that is definitely something that's going to go in. The archaeologist sim is going to have a great time being able to hire other sims to work as archaeologists for them here, and they should find quite a few interesting things. Oh, hi, Rainbow! Oh, the rainbow and the flowers, how pretty! The flower field has expanded. Palm trees are pop properly placed. <laughs> Ooh, you can see the rainbow in the, the water, that's so pretty. And over here, for those of you who did not see them before, we have the Repurpose and Recycle Center. This will be where all of the things that, you know, a sim buys and then you upgrade or you change, like getting a new sofa. Normally you just sell that sofa back, but in Ladesia, they really try to cut down on waste. So the sofa is going to be brought here to the Repurpose and Recycle Center so that sims can come and purchase those items for far cheaper than they normally would be able to, even though they're slightly used. And over here, it's the water plant. There's quite a bit of aquatic water plants that are used to treat the water. The water not only in these tanks here not only takes care of Ladesia, but also takes care of the surrounding towns, which is one of the ways that Ladesia is able to earn its keep, uh, generate a little bit of income. They don't really have high taxation here, so to trade off a lot of the inventions that are made, 
uh, a portion of their proceeds end up going towards funding the town. This is the jump station. Very green and leafy, but this is where Sims come to board and uh, the, sorry, this is where Sims come to board the monorail. There we go. We don't have anything like monorails or trains over here in the east coast where I live or in Missouri where I used to live, so trains are like this weird fascinating unknown thing to me. But I built it so that the platform for where the sims get onto the monorail lines right up with the actual monorail. It was pretty cool. See that one is on the wrong side, but the other one, see here it comes. Man, I love these coral reefs. I put them down, but they went all the way over there instead of over here, which is where I wanted them. Oh well. Oh yeah, and here's the wind farm, which is how Ledesia generates its energy. Excess energy is sold to neighboring towns. See? Perfect. Wonderfully lined up. And that's how Sims go to go travel to Oak Grove or any of the other places. But yes, so we really had the town grow quite a bit, and pretty soon Natalie is going to be able to open her shop, and we're going to have new Sims moving in. It's just been getting the place set up and going that has taken a little while. Also, all of the little places around here, the square, are going to be filled up not only with the school, which is what this is, the Ladesia Learning Lounge, or Triple L, as it'll be known, uh, but also all these little lots are going to be created so that Sims have somewhere to go for their club or the society that they're part of. And all Sims in Ladesia are required, at least once a week, to get out of the house and to go to their club or society to socialize. And this is put in place because Erica wants to avoid the phenomenon known as the isolated intellect. She doesn't want all these geniuses in her town to be completely socially avoiding all <laughs> interaction. She, the whole point of moving the community here and building this community is so that people interact and exchange ideas and come up with cool new projects. Speaking of cool new projects, we're going to pop in and visit one of the lots that I have just finished building, the Floral Bioengineering Lab. This will be where Sims like Erica, uh, who's very into nature and science, or perhaps Natalie, who prefers organic, natural veggies and everything, but is still interested in how far nature and plants and plant sciences can be pushed, even if she wouldn't dare put anything like this in her garden. <laughs> they would come to, here to visit, and perhaps they would come here um, if they're part of, say, the, the nature or the nature society or, you know, the floral club whichever group they happen to be part of that gets them out and gets them socializing with everyone else. But yeah, I'm pretty excited about the Floral Binary Engineering Lab. It was, it was a lot of fun to make. <laughs> There's going to be lots of interesting lots like that, and I just kind of take my time with it, because the idea for lots like these just randomly hits me, like, as I'm playing the game. You can't really sit there and go, hmm, I'm gonna come up with this really random, cool, quirky thing, and you're like, wait, what thing am I coming up with? In this case, I came up with the idea for the Floral Bioengineering Lab when I was decorating Erica's room, and I have a mushroom from Parsimons, I believe, and it's a glowing mushroom that it serves as a light. And I was like, huh, glowing mushroom. That seems like something Erica would have bioengineered. And thus, the bioengineering lab was created. We'll go to the top floor and put the roofs on. This is the laboratory in its full glory. Outside we have some hedges. These hedges were not sculpted. They were uh, prompted to grow this way. And these lilies, they're growing out of the water, awesome. <laughs> These bamboo, you think that's a fountain? No ma'am, that's actually how much water is just pouring out of the bamboo right there. Very cool. And then, yeah, you can see up here, the Green Roof Initiative is in place not only with solar panels, but also with some very happy, sun-loving, waterless needing algae that's up on top. Then, for fun, I have these different sizes of trees. 
on display growing alongside the building. But why don't we head on inside and check out what Sims of Lodestia have to expect from their community. Right now, the Floral Engineering Lab is showing off its bonsai project. So there's a lot of bonsai trees uh, all over the place. Some relaxing chairs to sit in. Just kind of get cozy. You could probably buy some of these bonsai trees right now. They've also just got some other flowers on display. I love plants in real life and in Sims and in pretty much everything. <laughs> so the number of plants that I'm surrounded by like exponentially raises my happiness. So whenever I wanted to just cheer up or just unwind for a while, I came in and worked on decorating this lot. There, this is also actually a floral engine or a floral crafting station. It's just a default replacement. I believe I got it from um, um, the Medieval Sim site. Let's see if I can. Do you happen to tell me exactly? Plum Bob Keep. There we go. Yep. Plum Bob Keep. Uh, that's where I got it from. I s stuck the little scissors up there just so that they had kind of a decorative item. But right now, the floral engineering. Uh, <laughs> Man, that is a mouthful. The Floral Engineering Labor Laboratory, uh, or the Floral Lab, just to make it shorthand, is allowing Sims to make plants or make flowers, like make flower arrangements, just to show people how relaxing and nice it is. So you can come in here and work on making some flower arrangements to take home. Over here is where all the research on a lot of your common farm and edible uh, plants is being worked on. Let me shrink this back. If we go back, nope. Here we go. So yeah, we've got corn, we've got some wheat, some notes, mushrooms, carrots. I love all the deco items I have. It just makes the whole game feel so much more realistic to me. There's also some flowers that are like floral arrangements that grow like that. So now florists just have to cut the plant and stick it in a vase instead of having to take all that time to arrange it. You know, unless they want to relax that way. A few more plants, some nice plants on the floor, some radishes, those are radishes, not lettuce, some pumpkin, you know, just some fun plants and lots of strawberries that you would expect to find in a garden. Oh, and then also overhead, there's a rose arbor overhead. So all those rose leaves that go across the top there. I think that this would just be a fun, relaxing place to come. I'm sure you could get some snacks as long as the food wasn't glowing. You might really hope not to eat glowing food just yet. Meanwhile, on this side are some of the more exotic arrangements. Let me raise that and then go in. For example, over here you can see the palm tree that attracts starfish. It's a very unique palm tree. It nurtures starfish. They just love it. They come up and get a whole bunch of awesome nutrients from it. Maybe it's part sea urchin, I don't know. Cactuses that love the water, hiding back there. Other cactuses that have other flowers growing in or on them. And actually these roses started out as an experiment to give roses more thorns, because why not? And they turned out to have like these cactus bodies on the bottom. Very cool. Ah yes, and then this masterpiece over here. This beautiful willow tree, which can grow several different variety of fruit. Not only does it grow apples, you can see there's a red apple, a green apple, here's a lemon, there's an orange, and there's a yellow apple hiding over here. So several varieties of fruit growing on a willow plant. Very unique, very different. Down here are several mysterious plants. Everyone's kind of hush-hush about where they came from, but very happy with how they're growing. But very hush-hush about where they came from, because that's, you know, for future fun. And tumbleweeds that grow with flowers. Meanwhile, on the second story, nice little viewing room where people can come in, relax, put down some food on the table that they happen to bring for a snack, and just kind of chit-chat while looking over the beautiful greenhouse. I think this would be a really beautiful area to come, but I'm a sucker for plants. 
someone brought me to a greenhouse where a willow tree grew all sorts of different types of fruit and could tell me like how chlorophyll works in a plant. Oh man. I I I just like fall over myself. Bolts would be flying everywhere. Lots of hearts. And here is another one of the research rooms. Lots of green plants hanging from the ceiling. A whole bunch of little plants on the desk here. And some fun, fun, interesting development with water plants down here. And in here, another research room. You can see the table covered in plants and some more notes. Oh, this is also the orchid room. Tons of orchids growing in here. A computer for taking some notes. Then upstairs, we have a special variety of blue poppy that grow in very icy and cold conditions. Over here, the bathroom, because you know Sims can't be in a community a lot very long without having to run to the bathroom. So there's that, and this is my favorite room. These are the bioluminescent uh, lamp mushrooms growing in kind of your decomposing soil with this awesome tree. I love that tree. It's just cool shaped. And over here, some really awesome conversions from The Sims 3 that have the life plant with its little pear shape and its halo. Plasma fruit, which looks very much like a, a beating heart. Got some skulls tucked in there. There's a dagger hidden in here if you ever happen to peek around and be able to find it. There's daggers hidden in there with the rocks. And also, a death plant. I really should put like barbed wire here or something, but I doubt they know what it was for. But yeah, this is a very fun little room here too. But yep, this is one of the lots that is very typical of what you can expect to see here in Ladesia. Uh, a specialized lot with some interesting little twist. And that's just what you're going to see in a science community like this. So it should be a lot of fun. There, haven't, there hasn't been very much growth in Oak Grove uh, since we've checked on Sky Muffin. I've been working mostly on Ladesia thus far. Uh, however, we do have a beautiful aquarium. Almost finished. Just a couple more rooms I have to tidy up. But the aquarium is underway as well. So that's a place where Sims who are really interested in the ocean can go. You know, other than the actual ocean. I should say interested in fish. <laughs> Let's see. And that should kind of cover a lot of the updates that you can expect to see uh, in Ladesia until we get to actually playing again. So next I'm going to probably catch you guys up on some families and it should be a lot of fun. All right, let's see. Hmm. Ah, yes. What I was going to share with everybody this time and I'm, is guinea pigs. Did you know that guinea pig babies are born nearly fully developed? They already have their ears open, their eyes open, they have their teeth finished. I mean, that's pretty amazing to me. Uh, they still need to nurse for mom. They're not like a completely independent. But they're not like a newborn puppy or kitten where they're completely dependent. They can already uh, like eat seeds and grass right away. They just really have to watch out uh, because they mature so quickly <laughs> that they can get a little too interested in their siblings pretty fast. So you have to separate them when they're a couple months old. But I hope you guys have had a good time checking in on the Desia and just seeing how it's growing, hearing a little bit more about how the town's going to be run. Uh, I plan on having the next episode up soon. We're going to investigate a little bit more about how I run the trait system in my game, and then we're going to jump into playing again. Thanks for watching!